Write the rule for the nth term in a geometric, geometric sequence or series, given a term in a common ratio. Now, another way that we could say this is really, th this also, this technique I'm going to show you, allows us to be given a term in a sequence, and given the common ratio, we can find the first term. So, a lot of times that's one thing we're interested in. So, we'll start by finding the first term, and then we'll write out the rule for this particular sequence. So we're going to use this rule, so you might want to write it down again just to get it in your mind, and we'll use this term, a sub 4, and this common ratio. So here we go. <clears throat> we're going to start with uh, a sub 4 uh, equals, and we'll pretend like a sub 4 is a sub n, so it equals a sub 1, which we don't know, and then r, which we do know, times 2, to the power of n minus 1, and in this case, a sub n is a sub 4, so it'll be 4 minus 1. And that'll get us a sub 4 equals <clears throat> a sub 1 times 2 to the third power. Not too bad. Uh, that gets us, ooh, by the way, we know what a sub 4 is, it's 12. So that'll be um, 12 divided by 2 cubed, which is 8 equals a sub 1. And so we'll reduce a sub 1 equals um, divide both by 4. You get like 3 over 2. So our first term is going to be 3 halves or 1.5. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and now we'll write the rule out. So in this particular case, the rule is going to be a sub n because the rule is always a sub n, you don't, uh, that, that part doesn't change. And then our first term is going to be 3 halves, and then we'll multiply that times whatever r is, in this case 2, and we'll raise that to the power of n minus 1, and in our rule we'll always have a sub n and n minus 1. Okay, so um, that gets us our rule, and if we wanted to, we could now find any particular term we were interested in. So, for example, let's say we wanted to find the sixth term in the, this particular sequence. We would say a sub 6 um, equals, uh, let's see here, we'll do 3 halves times 2 to the power of 6 minus 1. And that equals 3 over 2 times... 2 to the power of 5, and I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Since this is 2, and since this is 2 to the power of 5, we can cancel those guys. Basically, if you have 2 to the 5th divided by 2, you just have 2 to the 4th. So this is 3 times 2 to the 4th, whatever that is, and I think that's 16. So a to the 6th turns out to be 3 times 16, which is 48. So that wasn't so bad. Now, I'd like to show you another little trick for finding the, the sixth term if you know the common ratio and you know the fourth term. This is kind of a nice little, this this will be like a, a little tip or trick that you can use to save yourself some time if you understand this. Um, if we know a sub 4 is 12 and we know r is 2, um, check this out. What happens is... Um, Geez, I, I don't even know that we need to know a sub 1. Uh, all we need is this, a sub 4 equals 12. So what's going to happen is r equals 2. That's what we multiply each term in the sequence by to get the next term. So just multiply by 2 to get a sub 5. So a sub 5 is going to equal 12 times 2. And a sub 6 is just going to equal 12 times 2 times 2. And so we don't even need to find, we don't even need to use a formula to find a sub 6. However, if we did have to find something like a sub 76, then I would say it'd probably be easier just to use this rule than it would be to go through all this down here. But I just wanted to show you there's two different ways to get a particular term when you know a term and you know the common ratio.